I just got back from GTC, and I'm convinced that Wall Street does not understand Nvidia. That's because the key to finding great stocks is understanding a company's products, not just their profits. And I'm convinced that Nvidia will be bigger than Apple, bigger than Microsoft, and Nvidia's stock will sit on top of the indexes as the biggest company on earth. Let me show you why. Your time is valuable, so let's get right into it. First things first, I'm not here to hold you hostage. Here's everything I'm going to talk about in this video. I'll cover Nvidia's insane new Blackwell GPUs. I'll talk about a few things that investors need to know about Blackwell's design, costs, and margins. The networking technologies that Nvidia built to scale Blackwell data centers to mind-boggling sizes. And of course, whether I'm buying Nvidia stock as a result, and where I'd put it on the list that I made at the start of the year to get rich without getting lucky. But let me point out a few quick things before I dive into Nvidia's insane new Blackwell GPUs. First, Nvidia is not just an AI hardware company. They're an end-to-end -end AI computing platform, and Nvidia showcased a lot of software at GTC. I spent my time at the conference learning as much as I can about every part of this business. I interviewed Nvidia's executives, I attended close to a dozen expert panels and sessions, I got my hands on new products and service demos, everything that I think the mainstream media and Wall Street analysts are going to ignore until it's too late. And as you can imagine, there's way too much to cram into a single video, from self-driving cars and supercomputers to humanoid robots and digital twins for heavy industries, and even foundational AI models that other businesses can build on top of. So I'm going to spend the next few videos breaking it all down for you. Why? Because the world is going through a major technology transformation right now. That's my second point. Big businesses are changing everything, from the hardware they run on, to the kinds of tools and processes they build on top of it, to the services and products that they sell on top of that. And like I've been saying for a couple years now, NVIDIA's data center hardware is at the center of this transformation. And third, that's why I think NVIDIA will become the biggest company on the planet. Just like the iPhone becoming the platform of the mobile computing era made Apple the biggest company in the world, Blackwell and Hopper will be the platforms of the generative AI era. And if you still think that big companies can't get bigger, remember this. Warren Buffett didn't invest in Apple until 2016, 10 years after the iPhone came out. Apple was the biggest company in the world by market cap for five years when Warren Buffett bought it. And Apple stock is still 50% of his portfolio today. I don't want to wait 10 years to find the next iPhone or hold the next Apple stock. That's why I'm making these videos now. All right, one last point and then I'll dive right into Nvidia's hardware. I get asked all the time how I make these videos and I won't lie, it can be a real mental health battle. I like to do everything myself, so my main challenge is burnout. I get this brain fog that drains my energy and crushes my productivity for days. And I didn't think that anyone could relate. So instead of talking to someone, I would just ignore it or try to power through it, which would just make me fall even further behind. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about BetterHelp, the sponsor of this video. Whether you're stressed out about balancing work and family, or you're dealing with depression or anxiety, you are not alone, and getting help is nothing to be ashamed of. And honestly, it's never been easier. It can be fully remote and online, and after answering a few questions, BetterHelp can usually match you with a professional therapist within 48 hours. That's huge because they make it easy to switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without worrying about insurance or who's in your network. That way you can focus on finding the right therapist for you. Between running my own business and preparing for my wedding next year, my mental health is something I'm investing in more and more. So if you want better help with your mental health, check out the link in the description or go to betterhelp.com slash T-S-Y-O-U to save 10% off your first month. And a big thank you to BetterHelp and to you for supporting the channel. All right, I can't wait anymore. Let's talk about Blackwell. The rate at which we're advancing computing is insane and it's still not fast enough, so we built another chip. Hopper is fantastic, but we need bigger GPUs. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to a very, very big GPU. This is Blackwell, the successor to Nvidia's Hopper GPUs. And just like Hopper, Blackwell has two variants, the B100 and the B200. 
The B100 is a drop-in replacement for the H100, which means that data centers and supercomputers can swap out an H100 tray and literally put a B100 tray in its place. That's important for investors because it means that Nvidia won't have a hard time ramping up Blackwell sales since the infrastructure to support the B100s is already deployed anywhere that there's an H100 today. The B100 is a whopping 80% faster than the H100, while drawing the same 700 watts of power which means the entire Blackwell architecture scales much better than Hopper in data centers and supercomputers. That's why they're gonna wanna phase in the B100s over time. On the other hand, the B200 is Nvidia's new state-of-the-art chip. It's anywhere from 10 to 25% faster than the B100, depending on the workload, while drawing around 1,000 watts instead of 700. Compared to Hopper, these new Blackwell chips perform a whopping four times better at training AI models and an insane 30 times better for AI inference. But how Nvidia made it happen is really important for investors to understand. This is the most advanced GPU in the world in production today. This is Hopper. This is Hopper. Hopper changed the world. This is Blackwell. It's okay, Hopper. 208 billion transistors, and so, so you could see, you, it, it, I can see, there, there's a small line between two dies. This is the first time two dies have abutted like this together in such a way that the two, chip, the two dies think it's one chip. There's 10 terabytes of data between it, 10 terabytes per second, so that these two, these two sides of the Blackwell chip have no clue which side they're on. There's no memory locality issues, no cache issues. It's just one giant chip. When we were told that Blackwell's ambitions were beyond the limits of physics, uh, the engineer said, so what? And so this is what, what happened. So there are two important points here. First, this Blackwell GPU actually combines two dies into a single chip and connects them with a 10 terabyte per second link so that they act as one GPU. This is a really clever chip design, but two dies, an ultra high speed link, and a bigger total area for advanced packaging means that Blackwell costs over twice as much to make as Hopper, and higher unit costs means lower margins. Personally, I think the trade-off is worth it in the short term, because Blackwell's insane performance gives Nvidia a lot of pricing power compared to other GPU makers, and that flexibility is what lets them get even more businesses onto the CUDA platform at a time where every data center and cloud service provider is scrambling to get as many accelerators as they can. During a gold rush, getting everyone on your picks and shovels is what matters most. Second, if you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that Nvidia's chips are made at TSMC on a process node called N4P, which was custom made for Nvidia. So as TSMC's chip fabrication process keeps improving, shareholders should want Nvidia to offer a single die version of these chips, or find another packaging solution that's higher margin than the current architecture. Not necessarily higher performance, just lower manufacturing costs while still meeting market demands. And speaking of market demands, let's see how Blackwell systems scale to create full data center and even supercomputer sized solutions, because that's where the magic really happens. This is a fully functioning board, and I'll, I'll just be careful here. This right here is, I don't know, $10 billion. <laughs> Two Blackwell chips and four Blackwell dies connected to a Grace CPU. The Grace CPU has a super fast chip-to-chip -chip link. What's amazing is this computer is the first of its kind where this much computation fits into this small of a place. So the GB200 super chip pairs two B200 GPUs with one Grace server CPU. They're connected via NVLink which is a chip-to-chip -chip connection with 900 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. That's fast enough to move 150 feature-length 4K movies between chips every single second. This GB200 super chip is what Jensen is holding in his left hand, while he casually holds the $10 billion initial prototype board in his right. This right here is, I don't know, $10 billion? <laughs> yeah. I'm never gonna be that cool. Two of those GB200 Grace Blackwell super chips go into a Blackwell compute node, which is one tray in an AI data center rack. The two GB200 super chips in each tray are also connected via NVLink. 
at a high level and V-Link is for chip-to-chip -chip connections, while InfiniBand fiber optics connect different compute nodes and trays at the server level. NVIDIA also makes these Bluefield DPUs, or data processing units. Here's an easy way to think about DPUs. CPUs have a low amount of cores that run one operation at a time. GPUs have more cores and can run more operations in parallel. DPUs have tons of cores and can handle highly parallel workloads like coordinating, securing, analyzing, and transferring data between many different chips in a data center. So DPUs end up handling most of the networking workloads so that CPUs and GPUs don't have to. All right, so 18 of these compute trays go into one GB200 NVL72 system. Remember, the GB200 superchip has two Blackwell GPUs on it connected via NVLink. There are two superchips per compute tray, which are also connected via NVLink. And there are 18 trays per system. 2 times 2 times 18 is 72 Blackwell GPUs connected by NVLink. That's why it's called the GB200 NVL72. All right, so we already have a good handle on the GB200, but what about this NVLink? Well, it turns out that NVLink is way more than just a chip-to-chip -chip connection. The rate at which we're advancing computing is insane, and it's still not fast enough, so we built another chip. This chip is just an incredible chip. We call it the NVLink switch. It's 50 billion transistors. It's almost the size of Hopper all by itself. This switch chip has four NVLinks in it, each 1.8 terabytes per second. What is this chip for? If we were to build such a chip, we can have every single GPU talk to every other GPU at full speed at the same time. That's insane. By the way, NVLink, InfiniBand, and these Bluefield DPUs all came out of NVIDIA's $7 billion acquisition of Mellanox back in 2019 which will probably go down as one of the best acquisitions in Silicon Valley history. All right, so sandwiched between the compute nodes that we just talked about are nine NVLink switch trays, each of which have two of these NVLink chips in them. And like we saw in the compute trays, each NVLink chip connects four Blackwell GPUs. Four ports per NVLink chip times two chips per tray times nine trays is the 72 ports supporting all-to-all -all GPU communications at a mind-boggling bandwidth of 130 terabytes per second. That's the back, that's the, that's the back, the DGX MV Link spine. 130 terabytes per second goes through the back of that chassis. That is more than the aggregate bandwidth of the internet. We could basically send everything to everybody within a second. More bandwidth than the entire internet. Don't worry, I'll give you a second to let your brain stop melting. All right, the 18 compute trays and the nine NVLink switch trays come together to form this GB200 NVL72 system, which is just one rack in an AI data center. This one rack has 1.4 exaflops of AI training performance in it. Just to be clear, there are only a few exaflop supercomputers on Earth today, and NVIDIA just built one in a single 120 kilowatt rack that they sell off the shelf. And at the top of each of these single rack supercomputers exists a single InfiniBand switch tray to connect them to even more single rack supercomputers, and the resulting system can be connected together to make one 32,000 GPU, 645 exaflop, AI factory for the new industrial revolution. One computing platform for generative AI. One giant GPU. And while your brain finishes melting again, let me ask you a simple question. Why would Nvidia build something like this? And does humanity really need GPUs this powerful? 600,000 parts. Somebody used to say, you know, you guys make GPUs, and we do, but this is what a GPU looks like to me. When somebody says GPU, I see this. Now let's see what it looks like in operation. If you were to train a GPT model, 1.8 trillion parameter model, it took about three to five months or so uh, with 25,000 amperes. Uh, if we were to do it with Hopper, it would probably take something like 8,000 GPUs, and it would consume 15 megawatts. 8,000 GPUs and 15 megawatts. It would take 90 days, about three months. If you were to use Blackwell to do this, it would only take 
2,000 GPUs. 2,000 GPUs, same 90 days, but this is the amazing part. Only four megawatts of power. So from 15, yeah, that's right. And that's, and that's our goal. Our goal is to continuously drive down the cost and the energy. They're directly proportional to each other, cost and energy associated with the computing so that we can continue to expand and scale up the computation that we have to do to train the next generation models. So you can do the same amount of work with one quarter of the GPUs in one quarter of the data center footprint using one quarter of the power. For big data centers, cloud service providers, and future supercomputers, Blackwell lets them do a lot more in the same amount of space and power. And on the other side, startups and smaller companies can now buy a lot more compute for the same amount of money and power budget. That's why Blackwell is such a big deal. All right, I know this video is a little long, but I want it to be thorough since Blackwell is such an important piece of technology to wrap your head around, including its double die design and what that means for unit costs and margins, as well as how Nvidia's networking solutions can scale Blackwell data centers to do anything humanity can throw at it. Now with all of that context, let's talk about whether I would buy Nvidia stock at today's prices. And if you feel I've earned it, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel. That really helps me out, and it lets me know to put out more deep dives like this. Thanks, and with that out of the way, let's talk about NVIDIA stock. I think that Blackwell is about to move the needle in a big way for NVIDIA. Blackwell is not just a new data center GPU. It's an entire compute platform. Chips based on the Blackwell architecture will also go into self-driving cars, smart factories, and even humanoid robots all of which I'll cover over the next few videos because I really believe that Nvidia stock will sit at the top of the indexes and pension funds and everyone's portfolios for years to come. So with everything I've learned from Nvidia GTC, I'm moving Nvidia up one spot on my list of stocks to get rich without getting lucky. That's a pretty big move considering how high it was already and the fact that I just can't afford to buy as much at $900 per share. I also ended up moving Amazon stock up one spot since AWS is the biggest cloud service provider on the planet, and I think that their bedrock platform for generative AI is about to benefit a lot from Nvidia's Blackwell GPUs. This is why it's so important to understand the science behind the stocks. And if you wanna see why I picked these stocks, here's the video where I walk through it step by step. Either way, thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Ticker Symbol U. My name is Alex, reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you.